Welcome back, everyone. Our next presentation uh, is from North Metro Mental Health Service. So any of you um, that are interested, or hopefully a lot of you, interested in working in the mental health specialty. Um, so I'm going to introduce Vanessa and Charlene to talk to you about mental health in WA. Hi, everyone. So thanks very much for coming to listen to our talk about mental health. Um, as Nat said, my name's Charlene. I'm the nurse manager for staffing for North Metro for mental health. And this is my lovely colleague, Vanessa. She's one of our staff development nurses who's here with me today. So, ooh, which button do we press? The green one. Fantastic, thank you. We're gonna start by acknowledging the country. So we'd like to acknowledge the Noongar people as the traditional owners of the land in which we work and pay respects to elders past, present and emerging. Um, North Metro recognises, respects and values Aboriginal cultures as we walk a new path together. So today we're gonna to be talking about firstly what mental illness is and the prevalence of mental illness within Australia. And then we're gonna talk about what mental health nursing is and then we'll be discussing the career opportunities that we offer as part of our mental health transition to practice program. So what is mental health? Who defines mental health as it involving a state of well-being where the individual recognises their abilities and are able to cope with the stresses of life, work productivity and contribute to the community? Mental illness is a general term that refers to a group of illnesses. In much the same way that the heart disease refers to a group of illnesses and disorders, mental health is a key component of the overall health and well-being. So back to how common is mental illness? Statistics show that one in five Australians aged between as young as 16 to 85 experience some form of common mental illness in any year. That could be anxiety, depression, or substance use disorders, just to name a few. This is equal to 3.2 million people. Um, most of us experience a mental health problem at some point in our lives. Um, so I think that's a really staggering um, and startling piece of information to have come up with. Over the last decade, the number of nurses working in the mental health sector has increased by 50%, um, and that doesn't look like it's slowing down. So up here, you can see some figures on the disease burden in Australia. Um, the Australian Institute of Health and Welfare has ranked mental illness as the third biggest source of disease burden in Australia, after cancer and cardiovascular disease. The graph indicates um, the disease burden for various categories of illness. Mental illness is a significant issue uh, for Australians in terms of health outcomes, quality of life, um, co-occurring illnesses, death and disability. It significantly impacts on the individuals, their families and the community. So we are all aware of the current global pandemic, COVID-19, but what you may not be aware of is the staggering impact it has actually had on people's mental health. Due to the changes in daily life, for example, loss of jobs and having to isolate or living in isolation, which has led to an increase in prevalence of severity of d other illnesses like depression, anxiety, as well as substance use and post-traumatic stress disorder. The slide here illustrates how physical illnesses can manifest following mental illness, um, and also how mental illness is linked to physical conditions, showing that the body and mind are connected. So what is mental health nursing? So mental health nursing is a specialised branch of nursing with a focus on the care of people with mental health problems. Mental health nurses work with clients to promote the psychological, emotional and physical well-being. Whether it's working with clients to understand their mental health conditions, to learn how to manage their symptoms and be aware of what can exacerbate their mental health conditions. As a nurse, the provision of holistic, person-centred nursing care is the approach that we take. Working with the multidisciplinary teams, which also includes mental health advocates, peer support workers, the patient themselves, and their nominated support people to formulate, implement, assess, and reflect the best individualised care plan for each client. 
working in many different environments, inpatient and community, and in people's homes, expanding the level of experience in mental health settings. There is opportunity to consolidate basic and advanced nursing skills, assessment, interpersonal, interprofessional, and clinical observational skills, as, long, as well as a variety of different screening tools. We enable recovery through the provision of trauma-informed and uh, trauma-informed care and recovery-focused interventions, use of strength-based care planning, and the provision of counselling and motivational interview interviewing. Consolidating skills. So one of the main concerns is around losing already acquired nursing skills in a mental health setting. However, it is important to note that people living with mental illness have high risk at, are at higher risk of experiencing a wide range of chronic physical conditions. They've got a high rate of diabetes, high rate of heart disease and respiratory conditions in people with mental illness have been well established by research. Studies suggest that people with mental illness are more likely to develop physical illness due to the combination of their lifestyle, socioeconomic and system level factors, such as social stigma and medication side effects. So mental health is a key component of the overall health and wellbeing for individuals. People with living with chronic physical health conditions experience depression and anxiety at twice the rate of the general population. So why choose mental health? Maybe we're biased because it's the career pathway that we chose, but we think it's a fantastic career opportunity. Build knowledge, skills and confidence in mental health nursing. It's a challenging and hugely satisfying, rewarding job. Working in mental health, you work with individuals, different backgrounds, needs and goals. It's essential to build that therapeutic rapport with them to enable us to work collaboratively to support them in their recovery journey. However, recovery looks for them because that is also very individual. Mental health skills are transferable to your general settings, um, but also in your personal life. So you will gain the following skills, right? It is you will <laughs> gain these skills in the mental health setting. You'll become an expert communicator with clients, colleagues, family and friends, and the community members. You'll become more resilient and having more compassion and empathy. You'll become experts in de-escalating potential conflict and you'll become an expert in adapting and reacting quickly to challenging situations. These are just to name a few. So career pathway. There is such a wide variety of different career pathway opportunities in mental health, and it's as we've mentioned before, it's a growing sector in nursing. So a huge amount of different opportunities and job security available as well. Um, here is an example of a career pathway of one of our clinical nurses, Eunice. She started her career with us, I think, in 2014 or 2015. And as you can see, there's a huge variety of opportunities that she has had since um, beginning her nursing career. So a huge variety of different roles and in different locations as well. We also have um, Vanessa is going to share her career pathway with us as well. From She began her career as an enrolled nurse and she's going to share her journey with us today, which we're very grateful for. Thank you, Charlene. Um, so I'll start with when I was studying nursing, I never really had any direction in where I actually wanted to end up. Um, but in 2005, I commenced my enrolled nursing graduate program, which was based at Greylands Hospital. Um, I was fortunate enough at the time to be given a male and a female acute secure environment um, experience. Um, I found that in that year, I was challenged mentally and physically in those jobs. I was exposed to things that for a really long time didn't click for me until much later um, in my career. I later finished my registered nursing um, program and I began another graduate program working in general nursing, spending a lot of my time at King Edward Memorial Hospital, where I again gained various experiences. But what became really evident to me was that my mental health experience was quite valuable in those settings. Um, because as you can appreciate, I would be working with people who were going through grief, loss, um, and also depression, or they would have exacerbated mental illness because of their physical conditions. 
My decision to return to mental health was not taken lightly at the time, but since I have returned, I have managed to be able to get a lot of experience and exposure to different facets of mental health. I have worked in the triage where I was part of the assessment and referral team managing bed flow. I've worked in various settings from working with youth, adolescents, adults, older adults. I've worked in the community mental health service teams as well as in the mother and baby in perinatal mental health. I took a keen interest in student nurses and I also ended up working as a clinical facilitator and later on as a trainer and assessor for various TAFEs. Um, at this point in time, I am well exposed to the variety in mental health there is and I'm continuously still studying and getting training to strive to update and improve my own skills so that I can impart that on other staff, but also it's important for me to do this so I can raise the standards of mental health care out in um, the community. As mentioned before, having mental illness does not exclude you from being physically unwell. It can often be linked to one another. My general skills are valuable to assist me to be able to monitor my client's health conditions, to be able to have um, education sessions around preventative um, illnesses, also doing health promotion with them to help improve their, their lives. So I'll leave you with a couple of things to keep in mind today as you're going to all the booths. Number one, no matter what setting you choose to be in, there is always new things to learn and to pick up. Number two, the doors of opportunities are always open to you. You just need to be open-minded to allow yourselves to find an opportunity whether within the setting that you choose to enter. And number three, mental health nursing is a challenge, but it is also an extreme privilege to be able to help those who are at times are quite vulnerable. And through a really holistic client-focused approach, um, we can help them find acceptance of themselves and within the community that they reside. At times, Mental health nursing um, may not be always seen as the most popular option, um, but it's actually a really crucial part of the nursing area. And it is always an increasing demand for nurses to come and work with us. Thank you, enjoy the day. <laughs> so now that we've convinced you all to apply for mental health, we'll tell you all about our program. Okay, um, so North Metro um, offers uh, quite a few different mental health programs. We have a registered nurse program, an enrolled nurse program, and we also have two collaborative programs with Sir Charles Gardner Hospital. We're gonna be focusing on the programs that we run um, and more information on the collaborative programs will be provided with Sir Charles Gardner Hospital. Um, so our Transition to Practice program is a program that supports graduate nurses in clinical areas and assists them becoming confident and skilled in the speciality area of mental health. Um, North Metropolitan Health Service Mental Health has a catchment area of almost 1,000 square kilometres and focuses on engaging the workforce, providing person-centred health care um, to over 15,000 mental health patients. Our area of speciality is mental health and our transition to practice um, program plays an integral role in our workforce in North Metropolitan Health Service. So our program has quite a good range of opportunities for you. For, sorry, <laughs> for, for applicants. So we offer a one-year program, um, and within that we offer two different clinical areas um, from a wide range of sites, which I'll talk about in a moment. Um, the site allocations are based on your preferences. So you advise us of the areas you would like to go to, and we utilise those preferences when we allocate. Um, we have, for our registered nurses, we have a partnership with Edith Cowan University, and you will receive funding to undertake two um, funded units of postgrad education, which is an absolutely fantastic opportunity. Um, we have a study block at the commencement of the program, which will include not only your mandatory training, but also quite a broad range of uh, professional development training before commencing in the clinical area. Um, and then throughout the program, we bring you back for further professional development days. Um, we have excellent support on the floor from clinical um, professionals helping you on a day-to-day -day basis to develop those skills but we also have a, a, good, a good support network from our staff development team. You have access to clinical supervision and reflective practice as well. Um, we um, offer supernumerary time at the beginning of each clinical rotation to help support you in that transition into the new environment as well. Um, as, as most hospitals, I suppose, we have a rotational nursing roster as well, day shifts, late shifts, and night shifts available. 
Um, these are our different health sites that we offer as part of our program. So we have Greylands Hospital, which is um, the state's only standalone public psychiatric teaching hospital, provides acute care, but also extended care for those patients that need longer term inpatient support. And we have the State Forensic Mental Health Service, the Franklin Centre, which is co-located on the Greylands campus. Um, and that's for people with mental illness that are also through the state's judicial, judicial system. So Charles Gardner Hospital Mental Health Service, which has the mental health unit and also the mental health observation area. The mental health observation area um, has short-term admissions via the emergency department. Um, older adult mental health services, we have two locations for that. We have Osborne Park Older Adult Mental Health um, and um, Lower West, also known as Selby Older Adult Mental Health. Um, the main difference between the two of those is that um, Selby Older Adult is authorised and Osborne Park is a voluntary unit. Um, and we also, for our registered nurses, we have King, King Edward Memorial Hospital uh, Mother and Baby Unit, and that is um, for uh, patients who have mental health issues in late pregnancy and during the postnatal period. Here we have some testimonials from our current and previous graduates, um, and I'll let you read those for yourself, but there is one I would like to read from our current graduate, whose name is Rachel. She started her program with us in February. Um, she says, there is a misconception that you are losing your nursing skills, that you are actually gaining a specific speci uh, skill set in a specialised area. It's very interesting and people orientated and there are so many opportunities. I'm currently studying my Masters in Mental Health as part of my current Transition to Practice programme and I feel very supported. So that's the kind of experience that you will get if you pick us for your, for your programme. Um, this is just the references for the slides that we used at the beginning of the presentation. And that's everything from us. We've got a few more minutes if we've got any questions. No questions? Information overload? <laughs> okay, great. Thank you. Oh, sorry, one question. Sure. I'm really sorry, but I can't hear. Do you have a mic now? <laughs> We can turn this on. <laughs> can you please elaborate on the collaborative program with Charlie's? Oh, so, so Charles Gunner Hospital will cover that in their presentation. Yeah, yeah. Um, but essentially, um, that's uh, where you do half of the program at the Sir Charles Gunner Hospital and half of the program with us in, in mental health. So 50 50 split. Say, uh, some, most of the sites are the same, not all sites participate in that, but most of them do. The Franklin Centre actually don't currently participate in the collaborative program, um, so if, you, if that's what you're interested in, the, the only opportunity is for North Metro Mental Health with us. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Thanks everyone. If you, if you think of anything as we go on through the day, we're just out here. We're the first booth on the right as you come out of this room and we'd love to see you. Thanks.